welcome to Who Corner to Corner podcast. I'm coming to you live from the Who Corner to Corner lighthouse on the craggy rock shores of southern England. And out in the fog, I can see a strange light. And now something is coming out of the mist. And it's horrible. And it's ugly. And it's decrepit. Oh my god. It's Paul. Hello, mate. As you can, you are. <laughs> Make the dog alive or take me on, boy. I <laughs> know, oh, wait, that was a couple of episodes ago, wasn't it? We did that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, how are you today? Wait, what do you mean this this pulsating, ugly, horrible you thing? You just played right into it. <laughs> you set them up, I knock them down for you. Yeah, yeah I did, didn't I? Yeah. No, it's good to see you, Jeff. How are you, mate? Yes. Good, yeah, good. Yes, yes. Yeah. Good, We're good. here to continue our... Season 15, the collection. Just put a bit of atmosphere into it. Yeah, I will. I'll add a bit of, um, a bit of sound effects to that. Fuck! <laughs> For me, Daddy... Like no, not... Uh, was it, is it Grampy it's, Pig, isn't it? It's Grampy Pig Grampy there, Pig yeah. Grampy Pig is the best foghorn. No, yeah. Grampy Rabbit. Uh, is it Grampy Rabbit? I should know. I met Brian. You should know. You he- should know. He did a message for my kids he in, did, in which Grampy was Rabbit Voice. I yeah. love that, and my kids love that as well. Yeah, my kids were really puzzled why yeah. Grampy Rabbit looked like that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back on back on topic. Yes, so we're here to talk about the horror of Fang Rock. The horror of Fang Rock. <laughs> Just, That's good. I was yeah. going to uh, say that. insert do echo that. effect, yeah, but yeah, you've yeah. done that. Yeah, I've done it already. Yeah, just natural so, talent. Um, That's what that is. This this is the one that kicks off season fifteen. Yes, the, colon, the collection, mm-hmm. isn't it? Uh, and uh, is a so would you describe it as a gothic horror? Yes, I would. Who classic? Yes, um, but very 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 uh, small scale and mm. self contained, isn't Frank it? In so. its its yeah. lighthouse setting. Mm. So. Um, uh, some people at a lighthouse uh, see a lighthouse glowing keepers. light, yeah, if you will, see a glowing purple um, retro effect <laughs> flying through the sky. <laughs> yeah, it lands in the water, which glows purple. Uh, and then. Um, <laughs> Just doing sound effects. I was trying to. Yes, I, I know. But it's very distracting. You carry on. Um, and then. The Doctor and Leela turn mm. up. Look, what did, I made a note here. Hang on. Oh, oh hold on. Jeff consults his notes. Oh, so um, when the purple light crashes in, I just watched The Abyss yeah. uh, before I watched oh, The Abyss. Oh, slightly in, higher budget on The Abyss, the Illith, I'll wager. Yeah. Uh, available now for the first time ever in 4K. There's our James Cameron reference. Lovely. Let's get it over um, and done with. So the purple the light made minutes. me... <laughs> Think of the ship from the abyss, the way all the lights are purple in there. Did that. it? So obviously, this predates Cameron, the abyss, though, doesn't it? So yeah, Cameron yeah, took his Cameron's inspiration from it. it. Yeah, he's a secret Doctor Who watcher. He might watch it actually. That's <laughs> well, wrong with actually, that. Actually, in the book of um, mm-hmm. James Cameron's story of science fiction, it, which was also a uh, TV series, it never came out over here. But he talks with Spielberg, mm-hmm. Schwarzenegger, Ridley Scott, various other people. They talk about. All sorts of sort of tropes of sci-fi. So there's a section on time travel, uh, cyborgs, etc. And in the are you on commission uh, for this book, by the way? N- no, but it is very good. Uh, and in the uh, time travel bit, it does mention Doctor Who with a Doctor large Who. Tom Baker in in the mm. book. I like Doctor so, Who. Tom Baker is my favourite. <laughs> He'll be back no, one I, day. <laughs> I think Arnie would like Peter Davison because Peter. Uh, he'd think. Um, Warriors of the Deep is a bit like Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> there must have been another way. <laughs> imagine that. Schwartz, uh, Schwarzenegger yeah, takes on now, the Doctor. Yeah. That'd be good. <laughs> Arnie is the Doctor. That'd be a thing, wouldn't it? Imagine that. Uh, well, it's, Come it's on, so there. darn scum. I take all of you on. Hasta la vista, potato faces. <laughs> Santa, ha. Santa, my foot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the... Thing. Rumour that Statham was going to be the Doctor. Do you remember that? I don't remember that one. I remember yeah. um, the, the Hasselhoff. The Hoff was going to be... Really? The That's yeah, a good yeah. one. Uh, before, before the movie, you know, Doctor Who <laughs> movie in, in the 90s. I, and I Michael wrote Jackson. a letter. And Michael Jackson. Uh, yeah, I think mm. that, was a, that was just a rumour, rumour. Oh, just the TARDIS. Was the <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> uh, what? what was That's that? That's what Michael Jackson was. Oh, and imagine Statham, he'd be like, fuck you, the master. I'm going to kill you now. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, why, you little rat? <laughs> you little rat. <laughs> uh, <he's> just... <laughs> anyway, so back on back topic. Back to my point. Yes, sorry, so was there a Doctor point Doctor and Leela mm. arrive, and yes, she they says, do. is this Brighton? And he says... I'm not sure it's even Hove or Worthing. Oh, which, local reference to you. I did wonder this. Reference, yeah, local yeah, which, to you. Which mm-hmm. made me chuckle. Uh, I will shout out to um, Worthing. It's got a really good comic shop there called uh, Games and Coffee, I think, or Coffee and Games or Coffee and Comic and Games or something like that. Something like that. Anyway, it's a really good little shop there uh, for games and comics and mm-hmm. pops and models and stuff like that. Uh, so Are you on commission with them as well? Well, I'm sure no one from there's listening, but uh, there you go. And, and if they're so not, they, then why not? Yeah. So they turn up, don't they? And uh, it's not really the um, beachside excursion that they were. Not quite, for. no. Um, so Although I, they I do th- eventually get to Brighton, which they is. They do. Or, well, Leela doesn't. The Leela doesn't, does, doesn't, does yeah. she? No. Mm. Um, so it's, it starts out quite, you know, it's um, the mission status is. is straight there at the beginning isn't it you know it's really foggy um you know the whole thing is quite creepy and i was still Mm. thinking about the um uh you know the the lighthouse keepers and stuff and i I wonder Mm. what it's like being one of those guys you know you're really isolated and and lonely even though you know what's out there Mm. you know when all the fog and stuff comes in i i expect that and you know being so isolated, I bet the mind starts playing. Particularly in that you, I, you, that era as well. Yeah, well, that's that too. You know, when you there was an element of not knowing what was out there. You know, um, and um, yeah, I can imagine it's it's quite. Uh, you know, you look back at old Who now and you go, ah, it's not scary. But actually, you know, when you sort of put yourself in the mindset of everyone in there, mm. um, you know, it, it was a, a scary environment that they were in there. Um, and and I like that. Um, you know, there's something in the fog. You know, it's. Uh, Kind of quite a classic horror well, type thing. Do you know it's interesting you say that because um, there is a, a bit of intertextuality upon this very subject. Um, at is the there? end of episode four, the Doctor quotes from a Wilfred Wilson. He says, "Yes, Wilfred Wilson poem called Flannan's Isle," and uh, and that that pretty much describes ex- exactly what you said. You know, it's a really? it's it's a poem that basically talk. D- d- it's just a like a story kind of thing mm, you know mm. and it's um it's it's a, it's about the madness of uh, of living in isolation in a mm. lighthouse when one person dies the rest of them go mad and you know a crew comes in and finds out what happens you know pieces it together you know almost like they 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 see plates and tables overturned mm. and stuff like that and and the doctor quotes from the poem you know right at right at the end so it's, yeah i wondered what that that came from because it, mm. it's all a bit um it made me think a bit about you know the Mary Celeste and you know although obviously they find that found that boat empty but everything was still kind of fresh and whatnot mm. you know that's not the case here but that sort of you know desolate lonely you know isolated thing and then there's a film with uh, is it Willem Dafoe where um, our pats they're on an i uh, a lighthouse I can't remember what it's oh, called okay but that's a fairly recent film I think it's shot black and white four mm. three to sort of fit the uh, atmosphere mm. and then there is an isn't old... that IMAX <laughs> no, no no it looks four through this um, and then there's an there's an old tale of I think a lighthouse off the coast of Scotland where mm. the three keepers three staff they they vanished and and they were never found and, and um, you know all the stuff anything in the can go on there can't it well, I mean, the the theory is that you know they went to investigate something, noise, light, whatever, yeah. in a storm, and all got washed off the the you know the rocks. You know, <laughs> had they gone mad? Steve. Did they throw themselves off? Yeah, I don't. They might have been called Steve. I don't know. I'm not sure on that. Yeah, because obviously, as, as well, you know, um, you know, mental health and and general sort of well being was was not a problem back in the day. It wasn't really considered as uh, something that might happen as a consequence of living in those sort of conditions yeah. remote and everything else but you know like i think nowadays it, it probably would be but you kind of think you know without any kind of checks being done on somebody's kind of state of mind before they mm. before they take on this job and i think a lot of it possibly that i could be mistaken i think a lot of times it was kind of hereditary as well so you'd have a family who would you know where the the, the dad looks after the lighthouse then passes on 
the knowledge to his son. Yeah. And then it goes on through generations, possibly not that they necessarily live in the lighthouse, but they maybe rotate and, you know, pass it on through the generations and what have you. Mm. I, I don't know. I, I could be wrong. I don't know that much. but Yeah, I think there's, there's certainly something in that. Um, I just looked up, actually. It was the Flannan Isles Lighthouse. Flannan um, Isle. Yes, there you go. Yeah. That's the poem, a, yeah. A, a lighthouse. So, yeah, maybe it must be based on this then, yeah. Mm. Um, Though three men dwell on Flannan Isle to keep the yeah. lamp alight well, as we steer under the lee, we caught so no this, glimmer uh, through the night. True story. Well, this uh, story must have inspired mm. the horror of Frank Rock then. So it's off the coast of... Um, one of the isles in the Outer Hebrides, which is somewhere I used to go uh, when I was younger. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Uh, Did you see so the lighthouse? It, uh, possibly. I wouldn't have been aware of what it was <laughs> at the time. Um, What's that, so it man? says the first record that something was yeah. abnormal on the isles was December 1900 when, the, mm. when a steamer noticed that the light was not operational in poor weather. Uh, the... Uh, Lighthouse was manned by three men, James Ducat, Thomas Marshall, and Donald MacArthur with a rotating fourth man spending time on the shore. The crew of uh, the Hesperus, uh, a boat, uh, and the relief keeper found that the flag staff had mm. no flag. None of the usual provision boxes had been left on the landing stage for restocking, and none of the lighthouse keepers was there to welcome them ashore. They couldn't find anyone. Anyway, so it, it, they disappeared, basically. Uh, or to give yeah. it slightly more sinister overtones, <clears throat> aye, though we hunted high and low and hunted everywhere, of the three yeah. men's fate we found no trace of any kind in any place but a door ajar and an untouched meal and an over-toppled chair. Very good reading. Yeah, it says here, fictional use of this premise was featured in Horror of Fang Rock. Mm. There you go. Yeah. So very good. Yeah. Um, so, Welcome, yeah, Fact Fangs! Yeah. <laughs> we talk about <laughs> Doctor Who and poetry and history and literally everything right here on Ooh, Corner to Corner. Oh, oh. Check funny. it out! I, I didn't realise that, that that it was based on that, and I've just by mm. co- coincidence. Just by a little Googling or whatever. That. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I, I knew about it from somewhere. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah along the ways. Give yeah. me credit where it's One true. of those um, mm-hmm. books of, uh, you know, myths and. You know, stuff Myths like and legends. Well, you like the spooky yeah. stuff anyway, don't you? And, I do, yeah. You know, and so and those sort of stories are just yeah. fuel for all of that kind mm, of thing. Yeah. Just stoke that boiler. And um, th- this is a good spooky who. It's it's quite, um, mm. like I said, it's very self-contained. It was much kind of smaller uh, and claustrophobic than I kind of yeah. remembered, which is which is good, really, in a way for it. It, mm. it works. Um, it's quite slow, isn't it, to sort of get going? <gasps> what do um, you mean? What do you uh, mean, dear boy? Slow? How very dare you say such a thing? Why, I'm your, I'll have your gizzards hang out on the yard <laughs> after such a slur. <laughs> Slow. But then it all builds up really nicely. It builds. And, uh, you know, yeah. you, you start to, to you, you get the uh, sort of Titanic crew alike people Titanic. arriving. Yeah, I suppose, you know. yeah, they are from that kind of era. When's it yeah. set? 1902, three, Yeah, it's two, got to be like something that. like that, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah there it um, is. You know, and you've you've got the, uh, the sort of belligerent arsehole type who uh, doesn't care about any of it, just wants to get yeah. his message back to London, and you know. Oh, oh, the um, yeah, Lord Palmerdale, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. and and the screaming uh, Adelaide, y- yeah. Um, they, does Leela slap her later? Oh, she does. She properly yeah. slaps her as well. Apparently, yeah. apparently the, really. the two of them got on really well in the you know in, in the filming of the thing. And uh, and who had oh, what's her name? What's her name? Who plays her? Come on, Jeff, you got all the facts and figures. I forget. Is it Cumberbatch's mum. No, no, it was not. <laughs> Stop that right there now. Um, anyway, um, I want to say wouldn't Annette Woolett. Annette Woolett. There you go, Annette Woolett. She um, she said to Louise, "Now nah, just go and slap me, proper slap, really? me. proper do it, proper do it." <laughs> so really? Louise did, and it looks good. You know, she, yeah, she yeah, it's, totally it's insisted on not going for the standard stage slap. You know, where you sort of ah, <laughs> yeah, thing ah, <laughs> fake it. You know, <laughs> I suppose you can get away with it on a stage where nobody can really see. You know, but on a camera, yeah, it's still in the background slide. But yeah, it's good. I I, yeah. I love those types. I mean, it's to to just. Counter your um, somewhat generalistic sweeping statement that's a bit slow. I would argue, my friend, that it's um, it's really well structured because in part one you have 
you know, you have the setup and you have an introduction mm. to the mystery, you have a mysterious death, you have the Doctor and Lula arrive straight into a situation that is starting to go a little bit tense and, as you say, quite isolated. The fog draws in, the atmosphere builds, and just when you kind of know what's going on at the end of it, um, we get that, you know, the, like you said, the, the steamboat crashes into the rocks. Yeah. So then in part two, we've got new characters who are suddenly introduced into this situation. So now we know a little bit more than they do. Mm. And, of course, we're signing with the doctor on this. So now you have, you know, it's like an added element into the story. And that yeah. kind of happens. So at the end of part two, then, in part three, we get, um, you know, we get the monster starting to really mm. make an appearance and start to, you know, it's really t- it's killed off quite a few people by this point. Yeah. And then in part four, we have the resolution, you know, which is the, mm. the, the big climax of the thing. No, I, I don't it's, think it's... it's wonderfully, wonderfully paced. And, you know, I would say anybody who says that horror fan rock is slow, um, no, it isn't. <laughs> Basically, no, I, I don't think it's badly structured at all. I, I think you're right. I just that first episode is quite. Uh, it's, it, it's it's paced appropriately. Yes, for the it story is. it tells. Yeah, yeah. and and mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything necessarily bad about that because it's all quite important stuff. Um, and and then mm. yeah, like you said, part two, you get introduced to these new characters. I think if you didn't have those, it would have probably struggled. It somewhat. would totally struggle. You know, yeah, it would carry they, four they, reps. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, so they bring quite a lot of conflict to it and, mm. um, you know, drama and obviously more people to bump off as well. Um, and, and like Root said, and fodder. Builds up, yeah. <laughs> Root and fodder. Um, Love that. I just thought of that right there. I think. The, the, um, oh, that's what we should call this episode. Um, <laughs> the cliffhanger at the end of episode three where the doctor says, oh, I made a terrible <gasps> mistake. That's yeah, a, yeah. That's a that's great good one, cliffhanger. It? Yeah. Because mm. I, I was thinking that the one that the, the the part one cliffhanger where the boat um, comes uh, ashore, you know, it, it looks sort of like a toy boat on a little <gasps> rock. Um, <laughs> did you did you did you watch this on the, the Blu-ray collection? Yeah. Did you watch? Did yeah. you not watch it with the the, uh, the redone special effects? No, I didn't. I, I I'm not sure. I um, I think we've talked about those before. I'm not Might sure I sort of agree with those. Really. Yeah. I like no, to I, see I get it your as feeling. It was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And whilst again, I can mm. watch it and go. Oh yeah! Imagine if they were doing that now. You know, you'd have a proper, you know, spectacular mm. boat. Uh, you know, well, wacky. it's not quite that, but you know, it's... no. But if if they did it, mm. you know, if it was done now, but mm. uh, you know, I know what they're going for, and it and it works, and it's you know, yeah, you have it's to absolutely kind of, fine. Yeah, yeah uh, it's it's the same with all of the, mm. the uh, old effects and stuff. Um, but um, yeah, I don't really like the. Uh, redone effects I, I, yeah uh, just, just on this actually while, while we're on it because i mean i i did i do tend to watch these with the with the new special effects updated special effects purely mm. because mostly I, i've seen these stories so many times with the yeah. originals it, i just want to see what they've done and i think you're right i think there are some instances where it doesn't quite work and but then equally there's a lot of instances where i think it actually does work mm. and does kind of add to to the story i think in this one it's a bit of both i think it's 50 50 mm. i think there are certain effects which do and some which don't i think the ones which don't sadly i say the probably the rutan which we'll talk about a bit later on but i think one of the ones which does work is the new shot of the of the ship crashing into the rocks and it's done from a so you can imagine the the prow of the ship so we mm. see it head on, getting closer and closer right, like that, right. and then we've got some really nice lighting. At the, you know, you see the mass at the top, and there's the mm. sort of glow from the flares of the lighthouse. You know, which which is which is kind of there in the original. So in the original, it's a side on shot, isn't it? Yeah. You know, and, and you, you, it cuts to the side on shot in the the new effects, yeah. but the lighthouse glow is really it's it's great. It's there in the original, right. but it's. It, it somehow added. There's more of it in yeah, yeah. in the enhanced version, and it's really sweet. I'm not sure that, uh, you know, the quality of the actual effects mm. per se bothers me. Uh, I think it's just more sort of... It's quite jarring, though, isn't it? You can see yeah, that it's, it's a Yeah, it's tampering with, with something. Mm. No, I mean, like, the, the redone oh, okay. stuff. It's, it's yeah. tampering with tinkering. Um, an, an artifact of its time. Mm. Um, and, you know, everything else is of its time. And then you get this sort of shiny you know looking effect mm. added in uh, and i sort of think well why I don't, I don't know if i agree with that you know it's a bit like all the yeah. stuff that george lucas would do with yeah. star wars and things but and, again i um, think you know some of that it, it really works I, I think it works better where it's much more subtle and it's much more mm, in keeping maybe. with the yeah. original material like well i think one of the best 
tinkers with, with, with old Doctor Who is when in the Dalek invasion of Earth, they replace a wobbly hubcap on visible strings oh, with yeah. a Dalek saucer that looks yeah. kind of like the modern day versions, yeah, yeah. but is still in black and white and still kind of looks... Well, we- you know, yeah, it, we talked it, but about it, that when we were viewing. Yeah, it, exactly. We? It, yeah. It, it's in keeping with the thing, and I think actually, mm. so when when they just replace laser effect shots and stuff like that, I think that's okay. You know, that, that that's fine. I, I think sometimes they go overboard, and you don't mm. just get a laser effect; you get a whole kind of I don't know, white out and flash and something. Yeah. And some of these CGI effects, when I've looked back on some of the original, you know, the early DVDs that were released in the range, um, they actually look more dated, I think, than than the than the original effects. You know, the original effects were built at the time. They're in keeping with the whole design and look and tone and feel. And, you, and like you said, you slap on a nice shiny CGI and it can look so out of place that mm. when you kind of watch it 10, 20 years later, it just looks like, ooh, no, that's, it's, it's actually even more jarring. So I yeah. think mostly the SFX guys, they do a really good job of integrating the look and feel of new updated effects with the, the story, but sometimes it... It, it doesn't quite work, and I think actually, at the end of the day, it's all very subjective, anyway, isn't it? Because it's all well, yeah, what you, you know what you believe. But I do like the fact that, unlike Lucas, they leave the original there, so you can watch it in its original form, you know, mm. without yeah, all the that's, tinkering that's and everything good. else. It so it's nice um, that there's the option. Yeah, it hasn't um, replaced the the original. Mm. You know, yeah, because now to watch Star but... Wars original version, you got to bootleg it somehow, you know. Mm. Funny. Isn't there a massive 4k set of it all coming out uh i don't know there might be actually there might, um, there's something i don't know what's yeah in it, but, but again it's probably had tinkerings with it i mean Maybe. you know there are there are versions online that you can watch with the vpn and stuff like that but you know mm. I, I i don't do illegal shit so see a good bit of tinkering is uh uh updating mm. arnie's face in t2 in in the shot where he comes off the bike it uh, comes off the yeah. viaduct ramp thing uh, on mm. the bike, you know, and in the original, it's clearly a stunt guy. Mm. But yeah, so in can, the yeah. recent remaster, the, mm. the face was updated, and and that's good. You know, I think it or correcting the stars in uh, Titanic because mm. they were the wrong um, position for that time of year and location and stuff like that. So essentially, what I'm getting at is that Cameron does it right. And actually, you could argue Lucas does it right as well, to a degree, right? If you, look at, if you look at Empire Strikes Back, right, there's um, there's a lot of sequences where when they originally filmed it, like in Cloud City towards the end, right, they're, and they're, they're kind of walking through Cloud City, mm. and there's, they're, all the windows are white, right? Yeah. So they don't look out onto anything. So those have been kind of painted in with the backgrounds mm. from what's going on outside the city. And it was always the intention to have that happen anyway, but, you know, they didn't have the time, the money, or, you know, whatever to kind of do it before the film was released originally. And uh, it wasn't until they did the special editions that they could actually do it. Where it goes bad is in something like in the episode Star Wars Ep 4, the original one, they introduced that whole, or they redo completely that whole introdu- mm. introduction to most, most Eisley, where yeah, they have the, the speed of coming through, the dinosaurs are sort of changing around, blah, 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 and yeah. it's just, it just, I don't know, again, it's very subjective, but to me, that's always looked ridiculous. And That's I, the sort of thing that, um, you know, adding the view outside the window or a better mm. shot of the Cloud City or whatever is, you know, kind of, it, it, as long as it's kept sort of you know, within well, it is. You know, it, the, it, it the was always style, their intention to do it. You know, you know, yeah. to, to have that happen. And, and so I, I get couldn't. that, but yeah, it's when you add stuff. I remember those dinosaur things in mm. the uh, Moss Eisley bit, and um, you know, it's it's too much. Um, yeah, for, and, for me, and, it is. Yeah, yeah, and and something that could never have been done mm. in a film made at that time. But then there'll be a, a younger audience who watch it. Yeah, for the first brilliant. time. Yeah, yeah, and and it's and it's bringing it. Slightly more in line mm. with the later and earlier films, which were made later. You know, exactly. So, yeah. So it looks I, I more kinda, like it kind of belongs to the Phantom Menace yes. than it does the original yeah. Star Wars, rather so, than ending up looking like films set in the middle of this series that are more dated because of when they were yeah. actually <laughs> made. You know, uh, which is w- what they are. So yeah. I, anyway, back to um, yes, Horror back to Frank Doctor Rock. Who. I, um, I, I like this uh, sort of building mm. tension. And then, like I said, you get that third episode cliffhanger, um, you know, where the, the Doctor uh, has made a terrible mistake. And I made a note as well. Mm. Let's just find it. Um, so someone, uh, it, it must be Henry, he says, uh, are you in charge? 
to the doctor and he says, no, but I'm full of ideas. And uh, yeah. I thought that was quite amusing because he sort of does take charge, doesn't he, really? But still oh, the doctor. Down, yeah, he does. downplaying yeah. it a little bit. Um, and there was a good some good music, actually, when him and Leela creep around on the mm. foggy rocks in that second episode. You know, a lot of the, the music is sort of, uh, to me... It doesn't sort of often stand out or, or is it particularly <gasps> memorable, by which I mean I, I wouldn't listen to it uh, on its own, but it works to convey the atmosphere and it and it builds to it all. But that was a particularly good piece. I think. This, who, this, who did that? D- Dudley Simpson, isn't it? I think uh, okay, it was pretty yeah. much at this point doing kind of every Doctor Who story. Right. Uh, yeah, it, it kind of became the sound of Doctor Who through the 70s and right. kind of just got the gig for every show from pretty much this point on I think I think really? he'd done most of the previous season um, he didn't do Pyramids of Mars that was Malcolm Clark but I think outside of that it was pretty much Dudley all the way until right. John Nathan t- Nathan Turner told him they were going to get other people in for season 18 and Dudley thought he'd got that gig as well and no, really? Nathan, yeah, no, John right. Nathan Turner took him out to lunch you know, and he thought yeah, yeah I've got the new music you know, it, I'm getting a lunch free lunch and John Nathan Turner told him that he wasn't going to bring him in for this one because he wanted something new and something different that yeah you know, so it's it's difficult isn't it i suppose you know you you want to keep things well, as a freelancer and, yeah you, you yeah want, you need employment don't you so well yeah uh, yeah exactly and mm. and um you know the show needs to sort of keep it fresh and things and you know when you go back to the same old thing again mm. you know <laughs> what are you yeah. saying jeff <laughs> well do you know what i mean it's it's i, I think it's a good point mate i'm not not gonna be funny but you know, when you look at Dudley Simpson, how close Dudley Simpson's music was tied into the the, the everything within the, the '70s show. Mm. You know, it was as much a part of its kind of imprint as, as anything else. You know, as much as the camera work and Tom Baker, the you know the yeah. scarf and all those icons and everything else, and the theme tune, the logo, the music was an indelible part of the brand at that point. And you know, and. And it's like, but it had to move on. You know, all of those things had yeah. to move on at a certain point because we'd had like seven years of almost, well, six years, I think, you know, before 1980 when it all changed. And as we said before, you know, Doctor Who's got to move. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it would have upset a, a few people when suddenly we get Peter Howell and, um, you know, other other people's names I can't remember, but, you know, writing music and stuff. And, and you know, when that transition, the whole feeling of Doctor Who would have changed as well in, in yeah. 1980. You know, it looked different. New producer, new titles, new new logo, you know, stories written with a, with, with virtually zero humour, you know, sterile yeah. perhaps, and you know, new techniques, new technologies, and new music, different music, so different to what had gone before. Almost like, you know, let's say, with a modern day analogy, um, Murray Gold, it, you know, being part of the modern day imprint from the, mm-hmm. the, the, the rebooted Doctor Who through, you know, right through um, Christopher Eccleston, right through David Tennant, right through Matt Smith, right through Peter Capaldi, you know, mm-hmm. again, establishing a kind of a, 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 a feel, a soundscape yeah. for the show that suddenly when you take it away, you feel it missing. It's not there yeah. anymore. And the show's a consequence feels very different. You know, but good different for me at least. Mm. Anyway, you know, because mm. it, it shows it, it showcases somebody else's talents, what somebody yeah. else can bring to the show, how the show itself can be different. And of course, like you're saying, you know, wouldn't it wouldn't be terrible if we went back to all that. Well, guess what? Yeah, exactly. You know, we've got Murray yeah. Gold back on again. So actually, any progress that the show might have made in that front has almost kind of been reset. It would have been mm. like that if they'd have brought Dudley Simpson back for say, I don't know, Colin Baker or Sylvester McCoy. Yeah. You know, pleasing to the old fans. You know, but actually, for us new fans at the time, you know, which I was then, it's why would they do that? You know, I just and and I yeah, do and struggle also, with this in the mm. modern show. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, I'm not Murray Gold's biggest fan. Yeah, and I do like a lot of it, um, but I, I I hate being told how to feel yeah. by by something that just just doesn't really sit well. You know what I mean? I just you know people probably dislike Dudley Simpson as well, you know. Maybe yeah. for, the, for them, maybe it sounds like throwing a whole bunch of percussion instruments down a flight of stairs, you know. But that's jazz, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, you, you get attached to things, don't you? And then when it changes, mm. it's, it's jarring, like you say. And, um, you know, but, but Doctor Who is a show that is so much about change. And, mm. you know, again, as 
as Chris Chibnall described it, you know, it's it's these volumes of a long ongoing mm. story, and you know, it's it's quite nice that you know these volumes differ. You know, it's, yeah. it's a bit like uh, you know. Spider-Man, you know, it, there might be a run that's drawn by someone that you don't particularly like the art of, and then yeah. someone else comes along, and you, you know, you gel with that a bit more. And I think it keeps it interesting and it keeps it fresh. And um, you know, or th- Judge Dread, yeah, to name a comic series that I actually like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, you know, and things like this, you know, they they depend so much on on different creative energy. You know, production mm. teams teams change. You know, the the the, cre- the the producers change, the script, the writers change, the actors change. You know, throughout Doctor Who, and all of that brings a fresh energy to to the show and helps it helps it prolong. You know, and I, yeah. I I've oft- well, we've often said on here, haven't we? You know, as soon as it starts dialing back, you know, fine to revisit the old days as a bit of a homage or you know, kind of fan love letter or something. But mm. you know, to build the future of the show on something that happened like ten years ago or more is yeah i creatively questionable it you know mm. could be successful probably will be but yeah you know yeah we'll see we shall see, see. so what do you think of mm. the rutan i thought it was oh, quite amusing when yeah um, I, I do like the original jellyfish <laughs> yeah um I can't remember his name with the lighthouse keeper ruben oh ruben, ruben. He says, time to abandon this ridiculous shape and then turns into the uh, actual root <laughs> Yeah, it's... it's. I mean, I, uh, it, 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 as far as I recall from what I've read around this years ago is that it was put together pretty quickly. You know, this is yeah, a time... Yeah, I've read that this as well, is, yeah. yeah. This is a time in Doctor Who's history where the programme and the TV industry is under a huge amount of stress. You know, the the, the politics in 1976, 6, 7, 8, 9, 80 were not great. You know, the country was struggling. It was Inflation was, was massive. The trade unions had a kind of stranglehold on, on so many things, which probably always been the case. But, you know, and the, you know, the, the things were starting to cost a huge amount. I mean, inflation was, was ridiculous. I remember being a kid at the time, look, you know, watching a news item saying, you know, kicking off that a beer and a a beer was going to cost more than a pound. It's like, a pound? A pound for a beer? How yeah. dare they? And a packet of fags. <laughs> you know, for a pound? A pound? Ah, oh, what? What's this country coming to? Ah! But, you know, that was a big Cheap. thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. A pound would, carried a lot in them days. Yeah. So, you know, and so this is, this is all under this kind of stress. Plus, um, the whole production of this was in was in a different studio. It wasn't at BBC, um, you know, oh, wherever really? it was, TV centre. It was all in Pebble Mill in in Birmingham. Yeah. So, which is a much smaller studio. It's a new studio, but it was much smaller. They'd never done anything there like this at that time. Mm. They didn't really have the facilities set up for it. But from what I understand, the the people running the studio, all the technicians, the crew, and everything up there were so were so up for doing Doctor Who, that they basically cannibalised whatever they could. They made whatever they could happen. So when the crew turned right. up, you know, when Paddy Russell, the director, and the techs and everyone else turned up, they, they, they kind of had what they needed. And I think it was quite a perfect fit. They still had to botch a few things together. And, um, yeah, so... But, but yeah, sorry, I, I was going off on the one there. The, the, the Rutan probably suffered from, uh, you know, these sort of pressures and stresses. You know, I I think actually I I don't dislike it. I think it looks. You, you mean the actual jellyfish thing itself, as or the idea, the concept of a shape shifting. Yeah, no, I I, I like the um, you know, the shape shifter thing is cool. Mm. And when it, when you finally heard it talk, it was sort of like um, it was kind of standard, wasn't it? Through a modulator. Well, it was like a Sontaran, and, and well, it, it was, was like, it was um, like um, the brain of Morbius, right? From a uh, you know from the previous season, yeah, literally the same. <laughs> yeah, it's it's speech patterns. Uh, mm. You know, made me think of Sontarans and you know, yeah, you yeah. It's got a, this it, it uh, has, ridiculous planet and all this sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's got the same kind of bluster, hasn't it? Actually, yeah, you know, that's it. Yeah, it's, and and they've got that ongoing war. You know, and, mm. and I was thinking, well, maybe you're just one and the same, really. You know, Sontaran um, Rutan War. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's quite interesting that because we we'd had the Rutan mentioned in the series a couple of times i think in the time war it's mentioned and in the centauran experiment mm. i could be wrong fact fans feel free to double check um but this is the first time that we'd seen it and 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 of course this is 
so so that the Sontarans and Rutans were invented by Robert Holmes as part of the backstory for his you know the Time Warrior and this whole idea of an ongoing war with them. But this is a script by Terence Dix, right? So commissioned by Robert Holmes for him him to write. And actually, this wasn't the script that was commissioned originally. That's a whole other story, right? right. So Terence had to he literally had no time to write horror fan rock at all because he'd, he'd already written the vampire thing yeah the witch lords and uh whatever it's called the vampire mutation it went through a few name changes before mm. before it became state of decay in in the, the 1980 season but they couldn't use that because the bbc were doing a massive budget dracula version and they thought doctor who would basically be a spoof of it so right. you know they would go out around about the same sort of time so you can't have a big budget you know everything thrown at it to make it a success big budget Dracula production and a Doctor Who story where it's a little bit camp, a little bit cheap mm. and everything else. So, um, so yeah, Terence had to write this very quickly and just robbed the Rutan from, from Robert Holmes's Santara and backstory. You know, he just, just threw it in there. And, and, at the, and, you know, and, and all Robert Holmes had for it was a name, just a Rutan, just a right, foe. Okay. So the shape-shifting thing wasn't even a thing until Terence Dix wrote this story and right. locked it in stone. It was like in a state of quantum superposition. You know, it was neither one thing nor another. You know, the Rutan could be anything until it was observed here in Horror mm. of Fang Rock and becomes a shape-shifting. Shape-shifting is great, obviously, because it allows things to be done slightly on a cheap. You don't need to show yeah. the alien monster at all, really, but they yeah, chose yeah. to do the jellyfish thing. Um, so the jellyfish thing, I, uh, you know, it comes in for a lot of stick and it doesn't look great, but I kind of like it. Looks like a, a sort of Savoy cabbage with some, I don't know, wrapped in. Um, what's the stuff? What's that stuff? That uh, what do they call it? Bubble wrap. No, 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 no. Um, the ins- film. No, no, no. The stuff you eat. What's it called? The, the inside Food. of a stomach lining. You know, tripe. Tripe, that's it. I, w- I, I wouldn't eat it. It looks disgusting. But it looks oh, like a Savoy cabbage tank. wrapped in tripe. <laughs> Do you know what would be? It's a bit like, um, made me think of the Metroid in, in the Metroid. Oh, yeah, yeah I remember them. That. Yeah. You know, that would have been a, a cool design. Maybe if it mm. sort of floated a little bit or it had like really long tentacles or something. But, you know, it, it, it works. And, yeah. and the concept of it is cool. The concept and is I great. Liked its, yeah. its personality was, was pretty Such cool. Such is. But also um, the, 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 S, the new version, right? So I watched it with the updated SFX, as I mm. said earlier. It looks totally different. And really? it's like, it kind of, it's, it's, it still is a green blob, but it sort of, it has more pronounced legs and okay. a bigger eye, bigger dark eye, and it's more globular. And on right. one hand, it looks okay until it starts going up the stairs. Now, the original right. one kind of slops yeah. up the stairs, right, and quivers a little bit. The other one, it's kind of, I don't know, it sort of floats up the stairs, even though it's got these legs that sort of move as it goes up. And I just think that looks even more bizarre than the the tripe wrapped savoy cabbage so you know they i think both cgi and original effects teams have kind of struggled with the rutan and who knows whether we see them in the new series and what they're gonna gonna look like you know <laughs> i've just found a uh, effects comparison have here. you Oh, there you yeah, go so you can see it. but actually look. just on that i think they did appear yes they did they they were in oh um I'm going to say this now without checking it, but Shakedown from the 90s, a kind of fan-made um, audio thing, um, which Terence Dix reworked into a Virgin New Adventure script. Right. Um, I'm sure the Rutans are in that. It does look pretty sure. Cool. In yes, the they were, because Carol Ann Ford, um, sorry, spoilers here, people, Carol Ann Ford was revealed as a Rutan, because she was in it oh. as well, and she had it's brilliant makeup, all green makeup and stuff like that. It was quite glorious. There's um, a big Finnish series at the moment, which is Sontarans versus Rutan. Oh, yes. Yeah, I've heard uh, of that. But which, obviously you don't see them, do you? No, no. Unless they're in the cover art, I guess. Slightly, uh, slightly trickier. Yeah, mm. they must be on the cover art. Yeah, I can see it going up the stairs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, look, it looks good. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I thought it I thought it looked quite ropey, actually. You know, but, I wonder um, they, if it's fully CG or a puppet or something. Yeah, yeah I, think they, I think it is a practical model, which maybe they... Mm did something with yeah. but it's weird how they make the legs and they they give them some movement but they don't seem to really connect with the stairs they seem to kind of float up it sort yeah of. it looks like it's floating a little yeah, bit, yeah yeah like as if you had it on a string and you're sort of pulling it you know like you, you make a puppet walk up the stairs yeah on strings yeah. difficult yeah. really difficult and you know hats off to the guys who who do this stuff because yeah it's, yeah it's, it's worth the effort but i don't know <laughs> just 
Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It might as well have just stuck to the original. You know? I think there's a better shot of it outside the lighthouse when it's climbing up the wall. Up, oh, to, really? up to the, yeah, up to its bedroom. Because um, that in the original looks really ropey. So they've re- and they, I think they've redone some of the lighthouse and TARDIS model shots um, from the original as well. And they look better. Again, probably because they're more subtle, you know, than, yeah. than the original. And then, of course, the, the kind of, the, the two other effects, the, the sort of, when Ruben, as the, Ruben the Rutan kills, you know, a whole bunch of people in the lighthouse, there's a really nice effect when he's holding her head and just zzz, zaps them with yeah. stuff. So I think that's better. And I, there's a really good bit in part three or four, I think, when Leela throws a knife at him and he sort of splits in two. In, oh, really? in the updated effects, that looks really cool. Actually, I do like that a lot. And I think his whole transformation effect is is oh yeah, um, I updated. see some stitches together a bit. Didn't yeah, 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 you can see that. There yeah, you yeah, go. That's good. Yeah. So, have you read the um, Target novelization? I have, but years and years ago, and I haven't looked at it recently. Why? Are you, are you going somewhere? Uh, yeah, I wonder what it was like. Oh right, uh, I remember it being know. very good. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, again, I mean, Horror Fan Rock was... was um, I, I read the target way, 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 way before I saw it on TV. Yeah. And, yeah, it's, it's one that I really liked. It's one of those that, once you start reading it, you just don't put it down. It's, it's done in a couple of hours. a really easy read. And, mm. you know, it's just, it's just because it's such a really well-structured um, piece of writing, I think, you know, both as a novel and as a TV play. It just... Mm. You know, I, I find when I watch this, I, I struggle to watch it in parts... You know, right. as episode one and episode two, which is the way I normally watch old classic Doctor Who. But this one, whenever I load it up, if I've got the time, I will just sit straight through because it works like Image of the Fendor did that mm. we looked at a couple of podcasts ago. This this one works as a complete piece of drama from beginning to end. It's yeah. a complete story. You know, it's just four acts really. Yeah, That's, it is. Yeah, it's very know, theatre. Yeah, yeah it, it is. And you know that that theatre kind of. Um, way of storytelling and directing actually in this one i think really really helps sell it because it is such an isolated area you know location it's they they nobody can escape they're sealed mm. off and the kind of it just adds to the tension doesn't yeah. it you know they like you said earlier with the lighthouse being stranded and i said i just don't know why I, I don't know where it is because they all talk like that again, don't they? We got a, we got a bad yeah. case of the mummer sets again, like we had in Fendal. <laughs> so any anybody who works on a lighthouse, well, you got to talk like that, isn't it? I I, so yeah. I thought this was supposed to be somewhere in Hampshire or the Isle of Wight or somewhere. Well, that's Isle of Wight is in Hampshire, isn't it? So yeah. <laughs> I was supposed to be somewhere yeah. like that, where people I mostly was... talk like you, Jeff, right? Because yeah. you know, it's not far from you. <laughs> Whereas yeah. people tend to talk more like they do around where I live, which is down here, like you know Portland, Bill, Weymouth, and all that kind yeah. of thing, right? Rawr, 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 rawr. Yeah, that's, but, that's why I thought it was that sort of uh, direction. Mm. Um, so we asked people on uh, on our socials to... We did. Um, that we did. Let us know that what we they did, think boy. of the uh, episode. So um, we had a couple of comments on uh, Twitter. Uh, so one from, I think, PlayStation Game 187 had to load up the full name there. Uh, it's a top 10 story for me all day, every day. Super atmospheric. Love that it's based loosely on real events too. It adds to go. the vibe. Mm. Sticking this on, on a cold, wet, dark winter's yes. eve is how it's best served. Yum. I watched it at midnight, uh, or around midnight. I, I think I put it on about 11-ish and finished about half 12, quarter to one or whatever yeah. it was. That was a good time. The, you know the midnight hour to watch this. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good or, mm. yeah autumnal time. Yeah, um, PlayStation Game also said even with the green blob, I'm happy to serve this up to a non who person and not be worried about me cringing inside too much. Definitely, yeah. story and acting are mm. top notch. Um, and then the Herald of Creation says, I love it. The sets are so claustrophobic. The Doctor is weirdly bad-tempered. That's, I noticed that as well, because I know mm. Tom and Leela didn't get on great, and I noticed yeah. you know, Tom was a bit grumpy in this one. Tom was a total um, dick in this one, I think, wasn't he? You know, this, well, this is yeah, where he, he was throwing scripts out of the window, rehearsal. I think he was pissed off that the guy who plays Vince hadn't or remembered his lines. He's quite a new actor. He'd, he'd been doing stuff on the stage. And Paddy Russell, a director, had kind of seen him in something, brought him into this, and he was quite new and everything else and maybe he didn't really know his lines but in order to force him to learn his lines allegedly tom baker grabbed his script and threw it out of the rehearsal room window oh, really? accent yeah and basically just kind of lamparded this this poor this poor guy 
Well, yeah, you know, and I think also, yeah, he was hoping that Leela or Louise Jameson wasn't going to be in this one. He was thinking her character had been written out, so he's a bit pissed off that she'd had her contract renewed for another 20-odd episodes of well, this series and felt much more like establishing himself on the series, you know, because he'd done it. And I think yeah. also the new producer, so Graham Williams, is coming into things at this point as well, so... Philip Hinchcliffe has gone, and Philip Hinchcliffe apparently didn't know he was being replaced on this until Graham Williams turned up on, you know, to, to sort of start the handover thing. You know, so he hadn't been told. They effectively swapped programs, as far as I understand it. So Tom there sees himself as, the, you know, because Sarah Jane's gone, uh, his producer's gone, Robert Holmes' is script editor, who's written his best scripts, is going. Mm. And it's all changed. And I think Tom's recognised this, you know, retrospectively mm. as being part of the reason why he was, you know, it, it, he doesn't excuse himself. He's apologised a lot since then. Yeah. But, you know, all of this adding to a kind of insecurity, if you like, you know, and, and yet also a kind of a, a, a sort of need and a love for the show, you know, a yeah. need to make it as good as it can be, despite all the pressures that are coming in from all sides, this, despite all the changes, despite the fact that the monsters turn up and they're not really that great, despite the fact you've got, you know, a lighthouse set that is difficult to film around and you've got Paddy Russell who has got a certain way of directing actors which Tom didn't apparently like. And actually, I don't think Louise right. likes it, like the way she works either. Um, but, yeah, there's a, a, a lot of stress, I think, behind the scenes on this one. And I think, actually, it kind of adds to the tension in the, in the mm. finished product. You know? Yeah, so, I think his grumpy um, mood kind of works for it, I think. Yeah, I think it does. Yeah. Um, uh, going back to Harold, he said, mm. um, uh, when the Rue Temple's Lord Palmondale off the balcony, it was imprinted on me forever. Yeah. Uh, when I first saw the book of this, I knew I had to own it, and it mm. kick-started my collection. It's a great, it's a great cover target novel as well. You know, it's it's Tom in a bowler hat, isn't it? You know, just with a bit of rope around his shoulders. Yes, yeah, that's on the uh, DVD cover mm. as well. Yeah. Um, so we also had an email from uh, Fiona Byrne, uh, who's at Fee Logic. Uh, so I'm just going to re read this one out. So she says, uh, lighthouses are often seen as quite romantic, especially as a kid. I mm. love the TV show Round the Twist. Uh, I remember that. <laughs> uh, I, I was going to do the theme tune, but I'll save us. Um, no, thanks. And you I thought it's a copyright <laughs> infringement. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the way I sing it, it won't. Um, <laughs> boom, boom. And thought it would be cool to live in one, mm. which it, which immediately sets up a juxtaposition against what is about to happen. Yeah, uh, it point. starts black and white, only colour is the light coming to earth, which is bright purple. I've often thought about how, at this time, even though broadcasts were colour, a lot of people still had black and white TVs. Um, and indeed, during this era, the end credits are still black and white. Uh, and she said, I thought this serial was black and white till I rewatched it. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, because it's not, it's scenes. just really low tones in the, yeah. in the filmed insets. But apparently also, um, those filmed, so, so those filmed insets on the, on Fang Rock, you know, the, the exterior quotation fingers scenes were done on a model stage in 16mm yes. film. Yes. Yeah. And I the prints they, they were, models, yeah. the prints were not acceptable when they got them processed. They came back and they ordered them to be reprocessed. The oh, reprocessed really? prints came back and they were still below par. So there's a huge difference between the quality of those filmed insets and the studio stuff, um, mm. which kind of, which actually again I think adds to the sort of spooky ethereal nature of the show. You know, something again yeah. which wasn't intended, which the current production team would have been incredibly pissed off with, and these prints come back of such low quality that you can barely see any colour in them. Even, you know, they're not black and white, but you know they look like they almost should be. Yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> And Fiona said uh, electricity was still newfangled. With newfangled technology. Emoji, yeah, I've been old with it. Um, and uh, she's commented on the, um, the what did you call it, the, the, the Mama West accent? What oh, they, yeah, yeah, m yeah, Mama Set. Mama Root, yeah. Mama Set, yeah. Who, Standard who BBC countryside, <laughs> yeah. so you know, yeah. genteel, not genteel folk, the opposite, rural folk. <laughs> Uh, she hey, says, ben Josh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, Jeff has also previously been corrected by Paul on the point of view shot being classic who. Sorry, so that's me and again? This, I didn't quite catch that. Uh, what was that one? It's, it says, and this starts with a Paul. <laughs> Jeff has previously been corrected by Paul on the Sorry, point of view Sorry, just rewind that again. So what was that? Classic who. <laughs> and this starts with a point of view shot from yes! the alien landing. Uh, we don't know there what it is at this point. Uh, and the death of Ben is also point of view. Sorry mm. to bring that up, Jeff. Um, I, I did actually make sorry. a note, Bring Fiona, it up as that, many um, times as you like, Fiona. This, and anyone this else as well. If view. anybody wants to point out when Jeff is wrong and I'm right, just do it. Just go for it. Just tell us as many times as you like. I I welcome it. Well, I did actually make a, a note that uh, <laughs> the point of view shot is um, homaged in, in Modern Who. So um, there you go. Uh, <clears throat> That's not quite what you said, but we'll go with it. Um, Fiona also said uh, the relation about the fog and the sailors is reminiscent of the Mer- Mary Celeste uh, yeah. or the Bermuda Triangle, mm. which is an interesting one. Has Doctor Who ever done a Bermuda Triangle uh, story? I think, oh, I don't know, it might have been referenced. Maybe there's an the... audio on Big Finish, actually, I'm not uh, sure. Yeah, but I that's, don't count uh, those as canon. Yeah, right, okay. <laughs> um, I do sometimes. If I've, if, if I've listened to it and I like it, then it's canon. If I've listened to it and I don't like it, it's not canon. If I haven't listened to it, it's not canon. It's really simple in my head, you know. <laughs> Easy. Um, she also commented about the Brighton and Hove stuff like I did. Mm. Um, and she's did mentioned, actually, just like, did he say it could be Worthing? Did he say? Uh, this isn't <laughs> Brighton, it's not not even Hove. Uh, could be Worthing. Someone, could be Worthing, yeah. <laughs> it's great. It um, says a lot about Worthing in a way, doesn't it? Well, Which I yeah, love. Yeah. I love Worthing. Worthing's a lovely Yeah, I, I like going to Worthing. Um, Fiona's also mentioned our image of the Fendal review. Oh, yeah. We said that Leela had a different outfit and mm. her hair was different. Um, and here she does too. And, yeah, and actually she gets into mentions. a very yeah. um, kind of, you know, pedestrian, uh, you know, outfit. It's not the Jeans and jumper, of. mate. And a belt. That's yeah. it. And, and boots. And her hair is totally straight as, as yeah. well. How great um, does she look just wearing a baggy jumper and jeans? It's brilliant. Yeah. Um, Louise so, Jameson, Queen, we love you. So there's, as she, she says here, so further to criticisms about gender politics with mm. the Meep choosing pronouns in the recent specials, Ooh, I've yeah. been noting how Doctor Who has always made references to gender. Eleven saying his horse prefers to identify as female, for example, mm. in A Town Called Mercy. Leela is happy to undress and get dressed in men's clothes. I'm no mm. lady. Working clothes will be just fine. Then she rocks a jumper and jeans. Uh, yeah, that's quite um, quite interesting as well. Yeah, because it? there's a lot of that at this point, isn't it? You know, especially when we get Skinsale and Palmerdale and Adelaide into things, because they represent that kind of gentrified yeah. code of behaviour and social standards and that very rigid social structure, right? Which, mm. which has been persistent on the you know the upper classes in in England for quite some time and 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 Leela just just totally disrupts all of that Adelaide yeah. can't deal with it at all yeah what does she the call men her, um... think it's just some kind of you know she's some kind of what what do they think I, I forget actually but one of them a, makes a of... comment about about her being a bit of a ruffian or something doesn't it and yeah the doctor comes back with something I forget now but um yeah, kind Ad- of playing Adelaide... on that idea of what uh, Adelaide calls her like grotesque or something. She's very sort of put down of, of her, you know. Yeah, very, very derogatory towards Leela. Mm. But Leela's great in this. We we haven't really said it, but she absolutely holds this story with Tom. It, they yeah. all do. To be honest. I love all the actors and all the characters in this are so so good. You know, yes, they play on archetypes as a lot of these do. But yeah, sorry. Anyway, I'm interrupting Fiona's That's thing. Right. Go on. Um, she says she loves how Leela wants to kill it and the strong characterization she has all through her companionship. Yeah, I, I noticed that um, Leela always takes quite a bit of sadistic glee at um, taunting the, the Rutan when it's it's dying. And, you know, she says, I hope you enjoy your death and, and things. And then later when they're trying to escape mm. from the lighthouse, she pauses stylistically to stick her knife into a boot before escaping. She does, uh, yeah. Which I thought was quite cool. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of brilliant Louise moments in here when she... when she, You know, that's what I love about Louise and listening to her in, in interviews and behind the sofas and things like that nowadays, you know, it's how much she gives into every performance and, and, and mm. how passionate she is now mm. still and how she must have been also back then. You know, she gives everything into yeah, Leela. You know, 
you know, yeah. she she if really Tom's does. She well. loved that character. There's no mm. two ways about it, you know. And, and yeah. you know, you just look at it. She's so believable. A little glance in the eyes, you know, like you said, of just a little thing of putting a book. And I think she fought tooth and nail for so many of those little moments. Yeah, you know, I'll she bet, fought yeah. with Paddy Russell, who directed this, and a whole bunch of other directors to do what they developed in rehearsals. You know, there's also when we looked at Image of the Fendal, you know, a couple of weeks back. She, uh, mm. th- there's some great moments in that. There's that moment when Tom Baker, you know, the Doctor falls on top of it you know they worked that in rehearsal right you know and and again had to fight to keep it in the in the recording right. stuff like that where it's like well we don't have time and you know we're up against the clock or whatever or it, it, it won't even pick up on camera she knew mm. that it absolutely does pick up on camera the little glances yeah. the little looks I've, I've found that bit of dialogue here actually which is saying um well it's where it's where they're talking about the doctor and leela you know the skin sale and what have you and skin sale says uh he goes uh oh so yeah, the doctors told them to stay here and Harker try and get some rest, and then he leaves. And Skin Cell says, "Well, he speaks with an amazing air of authority. I wonder who the devil he is." Palmerdale goes, "If you ask me, I don't think he's quite in. You know, he's quite." Taps his head. Those eyes. Adelaide goes, "The girl is very strange too." Skin Cell yeah. says, "I don't know about strange, but she's not a bad looker." Adelaide goes, "Perfectly grotesque, in my view." Were well, you a long it, time yeah. in India, Colonel? I mean, goodness me, there's a lot to unpack there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah, it's it's playing on a lot of those kind of um, the, a lot of the prejudice that existed at the time, and a lot mm. of the kind of need that these people in that station felt they had to kind of keep in place. You know, you can't move from this social structure if you do. You're a grotesque, or you're somehow abnormal or foreign. You know, there's a lot of foreign stuff going on in here as well. You know, not just mm. in the gentry, but also at the start of it with Reuben. You know, sort of you don't know all, all that foreign muck and thinks the doctor might be a Russian or a French or German yeah, spy yeah. or something. You know, something is not the norm. It's foreign. foreign you know, and yeah. it kind of works in here because that was a big thing of the times. You know, and it's 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 nice that uh, some of the drama kind of comes out some of the conflict kind of comes from comes from that yeah yeah it's good um yeah fiona mentioned uh, uh, uh leela says the creature has got into the lighthouse now we must fight for our lives and adelaide faints yeah uh, and fiona, fiona finished her own eye roll at this in time to catch <laughs> leela's which i very mm. much enjoyed so that that's the sort it's of nice little yeah. things that um louise would have been fighting for it's a nice contrast it? isn't it you know between yeah two different you know sort of female gender types if you like mm. you know mm. Leela yeah. sort of bringing things much more up to date yeah yeah she's great I'm really growing to uh, mm. you know enjoy her in, in these uh, rewatches that we've done recently uh, I never disliked her but you no. know, seeing her yeah. again it's it's you know yeah I agree yeah same and, I, and I've seen these stories like so many times you know mm. it's it's yeah you know Louise Jameson is fantastic Leela yeah the character you know absolutely brilliant Maybe we'll uh, see if we can get her on for a chat. That'd, That'd be great. Be quite nice. Mm. Um, but thanks for those comments, Fiona. That's really Definitely, thank you. Do, yeah. do send more in next time. Um, Especially we'll, if we'll they uh, admit Jeff's mistakes. And yeah, it's good. And then I'll um, just delete your email. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> no, I won't really. <laughs> but um, to, well, this has been... Oh, whoa, yeah, sorry, whoa, whoa, ahead. whoa, whoa, Tiger. Just hold on a second, because I, I just have to say, I just have to mention, you know, we're talking about characters and something. There are some... You know, and about this being a masterclass of, of character and plot and writing and everything else. And just very quickly, right, there is a moment, right? So here's the thing. Well, I'm going to come back to that. Sorry, leave that one hanging, right? So do you think, Jeff, that these characters get what they deserved? Um, is there, are there any, is there anybody in here that you're specifically rooting for? Somebody who shouldn't have been grotesquely horribly mangled by an alien monstrosity slithering up the stairs um i don't know do they i mean the the lighthouse guys were sort mm. of all right weren't they well vince yeah. i think vince is quite a sympathetic character isn't he the you know, young young guy. the young guy yeah young yeah, vince yeah. You know, who's horribly murdered by by the the the, the, the duplicate of his old mentor ruben yeah yeah which is quite sad. And then we get we get Harker, the boat captain, 
who you know is quite horribly done for. Ben, the original, the first guy to die in in, in part one. We don't really know yeah. much of him, but he's another mummer, isn't he? He's another one yeah. talks like that, Jack. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. We take him down. We will. Oh, 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 I just go down and check the boiler and make sure she's playing up or he ain't playing up. Uh, you do that, Ben. You do that, <laughs> and we know what's coming to him. So he's kind of standard, yeah. isn't he? Really? Yeah, you know? he might as well go. Um... I'll be back in a minute. Like, <laughs> I'll know. just take a quick look outside to see what's yeah, making yeah. all that racket in those dark, <laughs> dangerous-looking woods out there. <laughs> yeah, it's it's standard type. But do you know what? I mean, certainly the gentry, the gentrified people, so Palmerdale, Skinsale, and Adelaide. I mean, Adelaide is a bit of a pathetic kind, really. We we see a lot yeah. of her type in fiction, um, which is which is either a good thing or a bad thing. But you know, it is what it is. Um, Skinsale and Palmerdale. Now, these two guys have a bit of a, a dark. Now they've been abroad gambling, and and you know one of them's won a lot of money and is probably gonna you know and has managed to somehow blackmail the other one right. So who's a member of parliament? So there's nice little drama between those mm. that you know that that little trio, and we get all the, the the class thing coming through the way they treat the captain poorly, the way they speak to Vince, you know, offering Vince money to send a telegram as well, yeah. you know, and, and Vince takes the money now, you know, that's yeah. the thing. He, he burns he it, burns it later because he's hit by remorse or what if he gets yeah. found and he's taken a bribe or something. So he does have that sort of turnabout in conscience. But does the fact of him taking money kind of, um, you know, does that open a door to him being killed? You know, it's almost like all mm. of the characters somehow have done something that requires them to be punished by murderous yeah. dirty death in some way right maybe apart from the captain i don't think he's done much he just seems to be a bit of a victim but mm. you know but but when you look at um you know when you look at skin sale the old guy who's the last to go now he's kind of allied to the doctor in part four yeah. right? he's found you know they, they're looking for a diamond he suggests he can use a diamond in his cufflink which isn't big enough but at least them finding a bigger diamond on the dead body of Lord Palmerdale, who's copped it downstairs, right? So we, we get skin sale rifling through the clothes of a dead body, right? Adelaide's body is just in the background. It's still there, collapsed under the chairs, mm. right? It's still there in camera as we're looking at this guy rifling through to find a big diamond that can be used as a focus point for this, you know, turning the lighthouse into a weapon that's going to destroy the Rutan mothership. And so skin sale at this moment is quite a decent person, right? Yes. However, when he gives the diamonds to the doctor, the doctor rifles through and says, yep, that one will do, picks out a single diamond, throws the rest down the stairs, right? And Skinsale's looking at the diamonds down the stairs. Now, if he'd have gone back up with the doctor, chances are he would have survived. But no, he goes <laughs> yeah. down to rescue all these diamonds, this treasure, you know, all this cash that is eventually, that is kind of skiffing away from him and comes face to face with our, with our friendly green Savoy cabbage and therefore mm. is kind of given his... You know, deserved comeuppance, yeah, and yeah. a lot of the, you know, and I love that. Yes, it's kind of theatrical, and it plays on you know very standard kind of plot types that have been established since classical literature and everything else. You know, you have a character do bad, they meet a sticky end. It's that mm. sort of thing. But you know what? It absolutely works. This is, you know, in one respect. If you take that on board, you could argue that Terence Dix is writing by numbers, and he kind of is. You know, this is like a standard plot, a standard, you know, lots of standard stuff going on. The structure yeah. is literally A, B, C, D, E. It just goes from one to the other beautifully. But he does it with such skill, such skill, yeah. Jeff. The way he draws the characters, the way he establishes the situation, the way he cuts everything off, the way he drives everything, the inner, you know, every piece of there's nobody in here who doesn't have conflicts with something else or someone yeah, else yeah. going on in the story yeah. you know there's nothing that doesn't have consequences later on that just pulls together the payoff at the end and the payoff at the end is brilliant you know it's just in okay in special effects terms it might look a little bit ropey but you know as a piece of writing and as a piece of drama it's just so brilliantly done and I'll always say to anybody to re, you know reflect the, the tweet that, that you read out there that if anybody wants to look at Doctor Who, any example of Doctor Who as an example of how to write a script or how to write a story, how to structure a story, right? This is a good one to go to. Mm. You know, it is an absolute masterclass. You know, it doesn't try to be clever and anything else. And you know, there's nothing wrong with those things. I love it when people rip up the the the, the, the you know the the, yeah, the guidebook, the rulebook. You know, but the fact that Terence plays 
writes a story to the rules, right? Inverted commas, and mm. does a brilliant job of it. It's just incredible. It's kind of forced on him because he had to. He didn't have a lot of time to write this, as yeah. I said earlier. You know, he had to produce something. So he just stuck to, you know, stuck to the guns, plot structure A, B, C, D, characters with want something else going on, just literally assembling it like a like yeah. a tower, a jigsaw tower or something. You know, to, and it's just it's just fabulous. I absolutely you know, I love I love what this story is. I enjoy watching it. I enjoy the characters, the monsters, all of that sort of stuff. But equally, I enjoy the skill and the sheer craftsmanship that has been put into into this. You know, from a writing perspective and even the directing, the acting, mm. everything, it is perfect. Perfect mm. Doctor Who. Yeah, it is really good. Yeah, I, I'm going to rewatch it again, I think, and uh, yeah. try and do it in, in one run if I can do it in one run we'll, yeah yeah you know. two nights or something like <laughs> don't be such a wuss why are you eating Gary <laughs> done only one night back in my day my granddad laughed at you trying to split up over two nights uh, but also just to say as well I have to say this because I'll be kicking myself if I don't in terms of atmosphere that foghorn right and the mm, way the lights the... kind of go on and out mm, yeah. oh, you know and there was a bit when um sorry you carry go on. on no 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 go on no uh, Leela's asked to pull the uh, yeah and she looks really bored thing. doing it yeah. yeah and then when you come back to her she's quite enjoying it yeah 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 she is yeah she's got a big grin on her face and yeah. again these little touches that that louise puts yeah. in but the sound of that foghorn the way it adds to the tension in the atmosphere mm. you know this constant in the background which goes on and on and on you know i just i just honestly i i cannot tell you if you haven't got it already i absolutely love this right I, i'm starting to sound like tom kerridge Right, I absolutely loved that. That was brilliant for me. I loved it. That's that's Tom Kerridge right there. So he, no, you don't know who Tom Kerridge is, do you? No, I don't he's know. A, he's a chef. Yeah. Oh, right, personal oh. mate. But <laughs> anyways, right. So yes, um, is there anything more to be said on this? Wow, no, what have you said already? I've very much um, enjoyed that. I'd love to know what other people think of mm, it. So we let us know. Didn't, didn't get as many uh, comments as as we would have liked. So let us know. <laughs> Um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll pick another classic to rewatch. Maybe we should do another Maybe season so. fifteen. I don't know. Yeah, or, yeah, another that. Leela story. Yeah, mm. yeah. We'll run a vote and see what people think. Let's do that. Let's All do right. It. Thank you very much for Thank listening, you. and we will catch you next time on Who Corner to Corner. Indeed, we will. Yes. Watch out for the fog. Ah!